Okay, then what does it mean for our future observations? So we always admire this beautiful picture of faraway galaxies, but now that we know the universe is getting faster, these faraway galaxies are receding from us, moving away from us at ever faster speed. So eventually, we will lose their sight completely. So I've been joking, telling the funding agencies that this is the only time we can do cosmology, so we need funding right away to study these faraway galaxies. And some agencies have listened to that. So future big players in studying the nature of dark energy and trying to forecast the fate is, for example, this satellite, which is approved by European Space Agency, and it's named Euclid. And another telescope, which is going to build by the US agency mostly, is called LSST, which gets built on the mountains of Chile. And these nearly billion dollar scale measurements will tell us a lot more about the nature of dark energy in the future that we would learn more about the fate of the universe. And one of the techniques that these uh, measurements are going to use is the idea called standard ruler. We have looked at this map of temperature in cosmic micro background, but if you look closely enough, you may notice that sort of the characteristic size of the hot piece or cold piece on the map. So they have a typical size to the variation in temperature, which was the peak in a power spectrum as we looked at together before. And this characteristic scale is also represented in a distribution of galaxies too. And you know exactly what the distance is because you know the size of the horizon scale and uh, in the acoustic waves in the initial soup of electron and nuclei, and that will translate to roughly 500 million light years across. So by looking at the distribution of galaxies in astronomical observations, you look for a typical scale in the clustering of galaxies, and you can read off 500 million light years from it. So you basically have a ruler already printed on the sky. By keep using this ruler, you can measure the distances one by one down to many, many billions of light years away from us. So that way, you can use this as a distance calibrator. We measure distances much more accurately than we have done so far. And distance translates to time. And we know the expansion from the Doppler shift of the light. And you get much precise measurement of the expansion history of the universe so that we can forecast the future and try to address the question, will the universe end? And there are many projects trying to do so, and here's one I myself is involved in. So this is the super telescope I mentioned earlier uh, that's sitting atop Mauna Kea, at a volcano, on, on the big island of Hawaii. This telescope is a very good one for this purpose, because what we would like to do is look at the distribution of many, many galaxies. We are not interested in each one of them, but we are looking at the trend of the entire universe getting speeding up. How much? How is that distributed? So what we need to do is like asking the question, how quickly is the country aging in its population? What you need to do is clearly a census, not the individual objects. You need to look at many, many things and look at the trend of the universe. And in order to do a census, you need to have a large field of view. If you're looking at individual objects one by one, then that might take thousands of years. But if you can capture 1,000 objects at a given time, then that may uh, uh, give us information in a few years. And indeed, the Subaru telescope has a 1,000 times bigger field of view. It can look at 1,000 times more objects than Hubble telescope at any given time. So this telescope is really suited for this kind of census project. And first, we need to take a bunch of pictures, namely the imaging. And you have built this camera called Hypershoot Prime Cam that is already being tested. It has actually a close to a billion pixels, weighs three tons, so it's probably difficult to carry around. And we would like to observe nearly a billion galaxies with this new camera. And also, we need to measure the color very accurately. As we talked about before, we need to measure the amount of Doppler shift, how much the stars and galaxies look redder, and that gives us information about the expansion of the universe. Again, we can measure spectrum for individual galaxies at a given time. That will take thousands of years. We need to take spectra of 2,400 galaxies at once. 
So we are designing now that kind of a, uh, a multi-object spectrograph we call PFS. And putting this imaging and spectroscopy together, we call this project SUMIRAY, Subaru measurements of images, that's the imaging, and redshift, that's come, that comes out from a spectroscopy. So in some sense, this is a cosmic genome project. Just like the genome is a very important information determining evolution of the biological systems and even what kind of disease might show up uh, later in your life. So that's the, something we don't see, but really decides the future and fate of your body in some way. The so cosmic genome actually turns out to be dark matter and dark energy, and they together determines the evolution and the fate of the universe. So in that way, I believe it's fitting to call this a cosmic genome project. And many of our members are involved in this project. And timeline is pretty clear. In terms of imaging, this HSC uh, is going to start soon, which is a head-to-head -head competition. It's another project called DES. Both of them actually unfortunately slipped, but nonetheless, we are heading in the way. The bigger project will come much later. In terms of spectroscopy, this is a project many of us are already involved in, and the future LSST and Euclid may come somewhere in 2020s, and our projects fit right in between. So this is the way we try to get to these important measurements more quickly than much bigger projects that come later on. And this is the focal plane of CCD array, being, which was built already for this hypershoot prime cam. And this is actually the correct lens system. Think of this just the lens uh, in front of a camera. And this gets mounted into the camera. So you see this is a humongous object. That is no wonder it weighs three tons. And spectrograph is also a very complicated object, but the key component is this fiber positioner. We have a bundle of 2,400 optical fiber cables, but we need to point each fiber exactly towards a particular galaxy you would like to measure. So you need to have this little robot. This robot controls the position of individual fibers within like 10 micron accuracy in less than a minute so that we don't waste time adjusting all the positions so quickly. Then you just fix the positions, stay at the stars and galaxies for a while, measure the spectrum for like 15 minutes at least. And that's the way we move on to measure the next set of galaxies and so on. So this fiber positioner is being tested now in this multi-object system, and you see the motion of this, uh, the, the fiber positioner if you look closely at that flag in front of it, and you do these twisting motions, and in a very short period of time, you can adjust the tip of this, uh, uh, the object so that that determines the direction each fiber is pointing to uh, towards individual galaxies. That's grown to a very big international team. We're working together and working extremely hard and we are still trying to uh, accumulate more partners and more money. Uh, but with this project, we can map out the evolution history of the universe to this kind of accuracy that you can tell many different possible theories apart from each other as a function of how much the universe has expanded since. So this shows dark energy is like 70% today, and it shows dark energy was much smaller in the past, and it really follows these dots by connecting the dots you know what kind of curve you are on. And that's how we want to forecast the future of the universe. And this had been actually put together into a video showcasing what kind of spectrograph we are trying to build. And let's run it. So what we would like to understand is by looking at these uh, faraway galaxies, we need to know how the universe began about dark matter. Does it have an end? That's about the fate due to dark energy. And this kind of instrument can also tell us how our Milky Way galaxy has been assembled and how we exist. So looking at these photons coming out from galaxies billions of light years away, all these photons head towards our Milky Way galaxy and finds the solar system, passes through all our planets, which is very unlikely, but anyway, and then finds this big island of Hawaii where this Subaru telescope sits on top of Care. Dome opens, photons hit this eight meter diameter uh, mirror, then bounces back into these optical fibers, which have specifically been oriented to capture these photons. And the photons travel through 50 meter fibers, get split into three arms. Each arm gives you blue, red, and infrared data. By gluing them together, we can measure the property of each galaxy, 
how much universe is expanded, and all this important information uh, we wanted to get. So this way, we hope to unveil the mysteries of the universe, how it began, how we evolved, how we come to exist, and where we're heading to. So this is the kind of observations we can make thanks to tremendous uh, progress in technology, and uh, we will hopefully know much better about the fate of the universe on a 10-year time scale. So this is how this instrument is going to rock. So we finished these four lectures by now. Here was the outline, starting from, from daily life to Big Bang. Then we looked at the origin of uh, chemical elements in the atoms, starting from how the nuclear had been formed in stars and how the Higgs boson made it possible for electrons to revolve around the atomic nuclei. But then it led to even more puzzles. Dark matter is very important to form galaxies and stars. We don't know what its nature is. Now we talked about how we may be able to make them using accelerators and how we may be able to capture them in underground experiments. And the absence of antimatter may have to do with the nature of neutrinos, and we're looking for a possible conversion of matter and antimatter in neutrinos. We're also looking for the subtle difference between the behavior of matter, neutrinos, and antimatter, antineutrinos. Hopefully they will provide some clues. And by putting these together, we can get way back towards the beginning of the universe, which would eventually hit the inflation itself. And that was the subject of today's lecture, talking about inflation. And inflation may be happening again in the form of dark energy that decides the fate of the universe.